Hi, I'm Jason. This video is on sequential games. In sequential games, players make sequential decisions knowing the action of the other player. Sequential games can be shown in what is called the extensive form representation. The extensive form representation explicitly shows the timing of play. Playoff payoffs are represented in a game tree. I'll now illustrate the extensive form with a game called the centipede game. The centipede game has six decision nodes. At each node, a player can take and end the game, or they can pass, increasing the total payoff. The other player then has a move. The numbers one and two along the top of the centipede represent the decision nodes for two players. At the first node, player one has a ch the choice to take or pass. If player one passes, player two has the choice to take or pass and so on. At the final node, the game ends regardless of what player two chooses. The payoff when a player takes and ends the game is represented by the numbers in the brackets. The first number is the payoff for player one and the second number is the payoff for player two. For example, if player one takes at the first node, they receive a payoff of one and player two receives a payoff of zero. At the final node, if player two passes, they receive a play payoff of five and player one receives a payoff of six. If player two takes at that final node, they receive a payoff of six and player one receives a payoff of four. Before examining this game, I will introduce the concept of a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. A subgame is a part of that part of a game that can be played as a game itself. It begins at a single node and contains every successor node. For example, this final stage of the centipede game is a subgame, as is this subset of the game. A Nash equilibrium is subgame perfect if every player plays the Nash equilibrium in every subgame. We can solve for the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium of sequential games by backward induction. To do that, we solve for the decision nodes at the end of the game first and then work our way back to the beginning of the game. In our centipede game, using backward induction, player two at the final node will take for a payoff of six instead of passing for a payoff of five. When marking choices in a sequential game, it is often useful to mark the option taken by the player or that not taken, in addition to indicating the payoff they would receive. At the node immediately before, player one will take for a payoff of five instead of passing, given player two will then take, giving player one a take off payoff of four. Therefore, at the node before, player two will take for a payoff of four instead of passing for a payoff of three. Therefore, at the node before, player one will take for a payoff of three instead of passing for a payoff of two. Therefore, Player two at the node before will take for a payoff of two instead of passing for a payoff of one. And therefore, player one at the first node will take for a payoff of one instead of passing for a payoff of zero. There is a unique subgame perfect equilibrium. S1 equals take, 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 and S2 equals take, 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 where S1 and S2 are the set of strategies for player one and player two, respectively. In the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium of the centipede game, player one takes at the first node.